back to the Life in Transitions Experts podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Rollins, uh, here with another uh, piece of content that hopefully will be helpful to you. I specialize in property and stuff and helping people come up with solutions for their uh, property. Quite often, I'm working with folks who are either in distress or the property's in distress. And just the last couple of years or the last year, I've really dug into the niche of state administration, state uh, work particularly with probate and helping people who are navigating the probate process and hopefully spread, spreading the word to help people avoid the probate process. Quite often there's property involved in the states and people need some type of solution for that, whether it's cash sale quickly, or perhaps it's a um, they need to find a way to keep the property, or perhaps they even want to list it traditionally and uh, rent it out and, or list it traditionally and get top market dollar, whatever it is, I try to help provide as many options and solutions uh, for them. Um, as a cash buyer, one of the things that I come across often are people, uh, you know, that haven't done a transaction before, particularly with a cash buyer. And so today we're looking at eight questions everyone should ask a cash buyer. You should ask a uh, yeah cash buyer. So let's do that. Just gonna add that to the stage. So boom, here go eight questions everyone should ask a cash buyer. And number one. Ask them, are they running a legit business and do they have an online presence? If they don't have an online presence or a website, does that mean they're not legit? No, there are still folks out there who are just haven't taken the time to put up a website or have an online presence. With those, I definitely suggest that you at least ask some of the other questions that are coming after this or do some really good research to find out if this is a person that you can uh, trust. But in this day and age, almost everyone has some type of online presence and you can check the business. Uh, you can ask for their LLC. If they have an LLC, you can check what entity they're in. Now, if you are someone who is interested in doing this work that I'm doing and you don't have an LLC, or you don't have a legit business, don't let that stop you from having conversations and trying to serve people who have challenges and problems and all. Um, Eventually, you will need some type of online presence to show your legitimacy, but you can always partner up with folks and more experienced folks to help serve that person. Um, and that's the thing. How long have you been buying homes for cash? You know, experience is an indication quite often of future performance. Past performance can be an indication of future performance quite often. And again, I will say this, that there are people, someone has to start off. So if you are new, and you want to be a cash buyer, do not be discouraged. There's tons of great cash buyers that you can work with, support, and leverage their experience to make sure that you do what you are supposed to do so that you can uh, take care of what you're supposed to take care of when it comes to making an offer and following through on your offer to purchase the property for cash. But experience that is um, important. Either they have it or they're leveraging someone else's. And you can ask for references, testimonials uh, from previous clients. And again, if you don't have testimonials, then character references, you know, character does matter. So there may be other spaces or places that that uh, that person can show that demonstrate that. But most legit cash buyers will have that online presence and they'll, they we take our Google reviews very seriously. So seeing if they have Google reviews and see if they have reviews or testimonials, video or written testimonials is a great opportunity for you to See, they could even provide references, people that they worked with before. Uh, yep. Uh, number four, ask them, how do you determine the offer? Uh, we pull the uh, curtain back, and I like to be as transparent as possible. What Todd Toback from No Limit Cell says, hit them with in the mouth with honesty. You know, I don't, I don't hit anyone, but... <laughs> Really, if someone asks me, or quite often before they even ask me, I'll let them know how I'm determining what the price is. I am a business. My business, I have to serve to be able to gain comp the, get compensation, but I have to make sure there's some compensation in there. There has to be margin. There has to be ability for me to make money, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. Um, and so I'll explain. This is the margin uh, to receive. This is why we are um, – this. Uh, purchasing it or making this offer for us we based it on really three things the condition of the property the current market value of property selling in the area and the seller's situation to see how we may be able to support or help or create an offer that is uh, works for everyone number five 
ask them about the timeline, particularly when you're looking at the uh, the purchase agreement, make sure that there is a specific timeline that the transaction is supposed to be closed. If there's an inspection period, make sure it's not super, super long. If it's, um, yeah, so you just need to make sure they that they have a specific or legit time so that you're not stuck in a contract that uh, for forever. <laughs> all right. And ask will they cover all the closing costs and fees? Most, I'd say about 99.9% of your transactions with the cash buyer, they're going to pay all the closing costs and fees. They're usually getting this property at a discounted price because of the convenience and speed that they're offering. And one of those conveniences that they're offering is paying the closing costs and the fees. A legit Cash buyers should have no problem with that. Now, there are times where a seller or a buyer may negotiate and decide to split or, or things of that nature, but it doesn't hurt to ask. And again, that should almost be standard for a cash buyer. And number seven, make sure that you check to see if there's any contingencies with their offer. Um, quite often as a, an investor, even as when I'm wholesaling a property, I'm putting a lot of offers out. And so... I in in between the time of the inspection, that's when I have a legit right to market the property based on my uh, purchase agreement. And that's what I'm going to share with my other investors, my cash buyers that I've worked with and connected with and trusted over have built a relationship with over the years. And so there needs to be a time period where there can be an inspection. And again, this inspection doesn't mean that they're going to come back and say, hey, you have to do this. You have to fix that because we are buying it as is. But they need to know what they're buying. And so um, there usually will be an inspection period, but make sure it's not super, super long, 20 days, 30 days. Now, if it's land, now land may take up to 120 to even more days for a feasibility study because there's more involved uh, perk tests and other things that are involved to make sure that you actually have a viable property piece of land there. Houses shouldn't have a 120 day inspection period. Uh, if anything, we sometimes put 10 business days, seven business days. It really depends on uh, the nature of the property and how fast I can get my other partners out there and inspectors out there to, to take a look at the property, to make sure we know what we're buying. But make sure there um, that that you know all the contingencies. Did they put an earnest money deposit down? Has it been uh, deposited to uh, the title company or closing attorney or escrow company that's actually doing the closing. These are questions you want to make sure that you ask and that you I highly recommend you check in with a you know, closing attorney because they are uh, real estate attorneys and they can look and set up a contract or a purchase agreement and show you some of the areas where there might be some loopholes that leave you unprotected. And can they provide proof of funds? Now, I did put this up here, but I think it's Nowadays, to be, I'm just transparent. You could get a, I could, if I wanted to get a proof of funds, I could get online, go online right now. And there's actually companies that provide and offer proof of funds. Now, the thing is, with a uh, a wholesaler or a person who does this for a living, and if they have a huge pool of buyers, and your property is um, under contract at the right price, then really their funds are really unlimited. And um, but some people do want to see proof of funds to make to just to feel a little stronger, safer. So I want to include that in there. But I uh, just to be quite honest, this is probably not as important because again, you could easily find proof of funds anywhere online nowadays. And really, the property, if the seller's worth their weight, or if the buyer's worth their weight. If even they're a wholesaler, they're almost like unlimited proof of funds because if the property is under contract at the right price, then the money is there. Now, at State Pro Service, we try our heart, head, and hands on approach to the uh, process of helping people come up with solutions for their property. And if you have any questions or if you have a property that you're interested in selling quickly, or uh, if you just want to see what options there are available, we'd love to provide our consultation, uh, free of charge, and perhaps put in an offer for you. Perhaps we're the buyers. Uh, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a financial advisor. I do like to say that each time. I don't play one on my YouTube channel at all. I'm just learning, growing. And as I learn and I grow, I like to share it with folks because this is fun. This thing called life. All right. That's it for me for now. So eight questions to ask every cash buyer. This is the Life in Transitions Experts podcast. 
you let your light shine. Cheers.